chilling tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. My earliest memories were at the age of seven. I don't remember anything before then except stories of bravery and chivalry passed down by who I assume have been my father. I remember being sent away to live with a man and a woman, not sure if they were married or if they were relatives, but I remember being sent to them. I would ask them how I got to them or why was it my fate to be with them? And they would always tell me it happened through divine connections. When I asked them about my parents, they would only tell me that they loved me very, very much. I was given a title page. I would rise early, put on my uniform, and assist them in caring for the household, the land, and even caring for them. I would break daily from my chores to work out with the man. He would have me perform strength and stamina drills at, at the end, he would teach me hand-to-hand -hand combat. At 14, I was given the title squire and I was sent away again. And again, with no explanation as to why. The man and woman of my new home were like the previous couple, but more intense. What I previously called workouts had become more like training. The training was dangerous. Swords, daggers, knives, guns, axes, hammers, and other weapons of the sort. The woman was in charge of my education. That was becoming increasingly intense. I was quizzed on a daily and constantly pushed to study and use critical thinking. My teachings in religion helped me learn to decipher between good and evil. And I also learned how my actions affect others and to take responsibility for the good and the bad that happened to me. I was taken around more people learn how to become social, learning the small elements of caring interactions like eye contact and listening before I speak. The game of chess also played a significant role in my training, teaching me to be strategic, to think before I moved. At the age of 21, I was given the title Accolade. This time I wasn't sent to another home. I was sent to search the lands, looking for the opportunity to honorably fight for good. I finally understood my childhood, the blood, sweat, tears, and sacrifice all made sense now. There's a man called the werewolf or wolf man that resides in the black forest. They call it the black forest because the trees are so dense, 
only slight rays of sunlight can shine through. There have been reports of people missing near the forest and recoveries of mutilated bodies of both people and animals found in that nearby lake. People say when the moon is full, avoid the black forest because the werewolf stalks the edges of the forest looking for a victim to drag in. The wolf man himself is said to come from a foreign land and is a victim of a disease or curse as some believe that's left him with fur covering his entire body including his face. He spent most of his life in a freak show fighting and killing dogs and wolves with his bare hands and teeth. There's a list of people missing, expected to be lost in the woods. Maybe I can find them and bring the wolf man to justice. If he even exists, that is. There were a few openings into the woods. Since most of it was too dense to walk through, I approached one of the openings slowly, waiting for the moon to come out and give me some light. I couldn't use my flashlight because it would easily give away my position. And as the moon crept out from behind the clouds, I crept into the woods. The entrance of the woods had a slight captivation. The smell was extravagant. The slivers of moonlight fighting through the trees gave me slight glimpses of the exotic foliage. I walked along a narrow path. It seemed like the trees and shrubberies were slowly opening for me. I came to a widening in my path. The forest aroma was getting stronger the deeper my mission took me. The flowers were so beautiful, I almost wanted to stop and examine them. I saw brighter moonlight ahead of me. There was a field about 50 yards wide. The grass grew wild in it, but other than that, there wasn't much else there but a monstrous boulder. The huge shape looked out of place in the forest. I walked towards it, but I stopped and looked at the clouds that seemed as if they were running away from the moon. The clouds continued to run until they revealed a full moon accompanied by a beastly yet humanly howl. The full moon also revealed a clearer look at the boulder. I froze staring at his demonic skull shape. And I didn't snap out of it until I heard another howl. This one sounded closer. The woods that earlier were so beautiful and exotic now looked overbearing and intimidating. The branches of the trees danced in the swirling winds. It looked as if they were reaching for me. The enchanting smells from earlier were now overpowered by the smell of fresh blood. My heart was pounding. I struggled to keep my breathing steady. I ran into the woods and jumped in the brush. And another howl drew closer. The blood smell drew closer. And now was accompanied by a disgusting musty odor. I heard some bushes rustle across the field, and then I saw him. He walked out of the woods on all fours. I couldn't hear, but it seemed he was sniffing the ground, possibly hunting. My hopes were that he hadn't picked up on my scent. Could he really be good enough to do that? He walked towards the boulder and stood in the center of the field. From the look of the wolf man, he stood about six and a half feet tall and was about 200 pounds of muscle. His nails were long, they literally looked like claws. He 
He also seemed to be naked except for the fur covering his skin. He climbed to the top of the boulder in two easy leaps and looked around. I couldn't get a good look at his face, but he had long hair and a bushy beard from what I could tell. He jumped down and howled again and moved towards where he entered the clearing. I hesitantly followed him. Maybe he would lead me to an opportunity to get an advantage over him, or maybe I can find the missing people or at least their remains, maybe. As I followed, I could hear him mumbling to himself, along with the occasional growl. He reached a fork in the path he was on, and he paused. I took this as a chance to get a closer look at him. His stench was unbearable, and... He turned his face to the side, and I got a clear view. His teeth were yellow with slobber running down from them. His nose and ears were missing, most likely torn off in a battle, leaving him with skeletal holes. His one eye was wild and bloodshot red. The rest of his face and his body was covered in thick fur. The only gaps in his fur was the grotesque scarring that covered him. He took off running. I followed behind as quietly as possible. He moved short-footedly through the dense woods. I felt like we were headed to his home. The woods were getting more intimidating as the brush was thickening with thorn-covered vines wrapping around everything they could reach. He started to slow down at the entrance of a cave. The worst part of the black forest was this intricate system of caves that some say was made by man in an excavation project searching for diamonds while others say they were dug out by the hands of a cult who lived in the caves performing satanic rituals until the wolf man came to town. He entered the cave and I followed close behind. I had no choice. After I entered, I opened my eyes, hoping they would adjust. I couldn't see anything. I listened hard, but all I could hear was quiet until the silence was broken by an unnerving voice speaking a foreign language. I couldn't tell where it came from because the echoes in the cave threw me off. I froze and moved towards the wall, putting my back against it. The voice spoke again. It sounded like it was directed at me. I started to think, maybe I shouldn't have come in there. The voice sounded like it was asking a question. It repeated the same phrase over and over now. The musty smell was getting close, and I covered my head in anticipation of the first strike. I could hear him growling. I could smell his breath. Then I heard a woman scream, followed by the wolf man's heavy footsteps running in the direction of the scream. I followed. There was a light ahead coming from a room that I saw the wolf man enter. Inside, there was another scream from the woman, and I rushed to the entrance. What I saw nearly floored me. A woman was lying on a bed of grass and flowers, stripped down to almost nothing. She was caked in dirt. She looked like her legs had been broken, probably just to keep her there. Before I could finish analyzing the woman, the wolf man lunged at me. He knocked me to the ground, and his strength was unbelievable. He hammered my head and chest repeatedly. I took both hands and grabbed one of his hands and twisted it halfway around, but he broke free and continued hammering. 
able to grab his hand again, twisting it even further this time. Now he screamed and jumped back. I got up and set my feet while covering my head, anticipating the impact of his next attack, but it never came. I looked up and he was gone. Everything got quiet except for the woman's whimpers. I moved closer to her as she reached towards me. I checked for any injuries other than her legs. I would have to carry her out of here. But then I started to smell that musty odor again. She screamed, please help me, please. I nodded to her as she continued to whisper for help. He's close by, he's close, she said. The next words she spoke were in screams. Get us out of here. At that moment, I was clubbed in the back of the head. I dropped the woman and felt my body being lifted from the ground and thrown into the wall. I was stunned, but I had to prepare for the next hit. I got up stumbling and put my back against the wall as he vaulted towards me. I used his momentum to send him flying into the wall face first and I landed three punches to his rib cage. He growled and swung his backhand at me, knocking me back and followed with a club to my knee, knocking me to the ground. He quickly picked up a rock and tried to smash my head, but it hit my shoulder. Pain knocked my arm numb, but I sprang to my feet and tried to shake some feeling into my arm, but It was time to turn the tables. I rushed to him, punching him in his brow. He retaliated with a flurry of hard, desperate hits, and I hit the weather of his storm, blocking and countering when the opportunity arrived. I could feel him start to tire. I could tell the hand I twisted earlier was still was bothering him. So I countered that hand by grabbing and twisting it, kicking his knee and pulling him to the ground. Once on the ground, I landed a chop to the back of his neck, stunning him and slammed his bad hand on the ground. I twisted the hand again and he snatched away, dislocating the hand further. Once his hand was free, he charged me again and I dodged and landed a punch to his eye, directly in the socket, blinding him with his own blood. He started trying to sniff me out, but I ended that with an elbow to his nose. He fell to his knees and I kicked him in the groin and landed a knee to his mouth, shattering his teeth. He fell on his face, but I could hear him talking in that strange language again while breathing heavily. I grabbed his head and placed my knee onto his back, pulled him back in a sleeper hold and along with a few punches. He was finally out. I dragged him to the woman and reached down to pick her up. We started making our way from the room, but she screamed, wait, stop. I ignored her. I figured she was just traumatized and might not even realize I beat the beast. ripped from my arms and hit the dirt, dragging herself towards what had been her bed. She pulled back a bed of leaves, revealing a fur-covered infant. This just in, this just in, the werewolf of the Black Forest has been turned in to the police. He was found outside the police headquarters you see behind me. He was beaten severely by what seems to have been someone's bare hands. There is also a woman who has been rescued from the captivity of the werewolf, but details have not been released. Citizens of the area are relieved his reign of terror is over and terrified that such a beast actually exists.